Hello and thank you for watching part 5 of the world in 2018. We have before us a very important period of time for which the church has been given many incredible heavenly signs over the past year, both in the heavens and also on the earth, to point us to events that will soon transpire in the world. Looking only at the past year, we had the solar eclipse on August 21st, 2017, which divided the USA into two and marked the start of the Jewish holy season of repentance known as Teshuva, that precedes and leads into the Feast of Trumpets. This was followed by the great sign of Revelation 12 on September 23rd, 2017, that is associated with the birth and rapture of the Church. The Church is the only entity that has been given God's authority on earth to restrain the enemy from revealing the Antichrist to the world, according to the word of God. When the rapture occurs, Satan will be cast out of heaven and will be confined to the earth to do as he pleases, and as he must during the little season that he will receive. Next we had the super blue blood moon that occurred on January 31st, 2018, which fell on the Jewish feast of Tuba Shavat, and marking the new year for trees. This was followed by the longest blood moon this century in conjunction with Mars over Jerusalem on July 27, 2018, marking the feast day called Tuba Av, or the Day of Love. Currently, we also have all the planets positioned on the same side of the Sun between July 19th and September 1st. All of these rare heavenly signs combined, especially those that marked specific Jewish feast days, with very rare celestial signs, and having all of these events coinciding within the space of one year, makes it absolutely extraordinary. We don't always think about the odds involved in having all of these rare heavenly signs occurring in the space of a single year, which from a historical perspective also follows a biblical pattern. Looking back in time, we can clearly see 50-year cycles involving Israel starting in 1917 to 1918, where Israel received their land back as stated in the Balfour Declaration. Fifty years later, or one jubilee cycle later, in 1967 to 1968, Israel got Jerusalem back. We are now in the next jubilee cycle, which is also the 120th jubilee since the creation if we follow biblical chronology, and this jubilee year will end with the sounding of the last trump on the Feast of Trumpets, when the Jewish New Year starts and the world could very possibly be entering a new dispensation. In Genesis 6 we read the following, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. For that he also is flesh, yet his day shall be an hundred and twenty years. The 120 jubilee cycles, or the 120 repeats of 50 year time periods, bring us to 6,000 years since the creation of heaven and earth, a very pivotal point in the earth's history, marking the end of man's rule under the direction of Satan over the earth, and the transition over to God's kingdom, that will last for 1,000 years once Jesus returns to the earth. In addition to these signs, we have also seen a large number of volcanoes erupting over the past year, very notably in Hawaii, and an increase in the number of high-magnitude earthquakes, as well as vast amounts of animal deaths. All of these were promised to us by Jesus in the four Gospels and in prophecies in the Old Testament signs that we have to watch for to know that the time of our redemption is drawing close. The Word of God tells us that the celestial bodies were created with the primary purpose of serving as our Heavenly Father's signs to the world that would point out or mark God's appointed times that were given to Israel to keep on a yearly basis. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days and years. When we consider what was shown to us in the Revelation 12 signs specifically, we have a sequence of two major events that were depicted. The first was the birth of the man-child, represented by Jupiter, who is identified as the seed of the woman, 
and this occurred on September 9th, 2017. The second was the completion of the sign which occurred on September 23rd, 2017 and which is described to us in Revelation 12 verse 1 to 2. Although nothing happened on these dates, which left many people, including myself, somewhat disappointed, we should not discount the importance of this sign and the warning that is associated with it. Even though nothing happened in 2017, we should consider the important events associated with Israel that occurred during the past year, since this sign was given which also ushered in the 120th Jubilee year. When we see how this year is once again focusing on God's chosen nation, those who watch for the return of Israel's Messiah also know what this means for them. The possibility exists that the Revelation 12 sign that was given to believers in Jesus Christ in the book of Revelation served as a one-year warning to those who are watching for His return just as the feast days that were given to Israel to be kept on specific days of a year served as a yearly rehearsal to prepare Israel for recognizing their Messiah when he was presented to them, but which they failed to do. Because Israel failed to recognize the fulfillment of the spring feasts by their Messiah when he presented himself to them as a suffering servant, they were cursed with blindness so that they remain blind to the identity of their Messiah to this day. Only when the fullness of the Gentiles had been achieved will this blindness be removed to allow Israel to look upon their Messiah with their eyes and to recognize who he is, since they are a nation without any faith and will have to be shown who their Messiah is. However, we who believe that Jesus is the Son of God and who are expecting His return for us are not blinded to what is happening before us, even though most of the world, including many Christians, have shunned the importance of these amazing signs that have been provided to us by our Heavenly Father to inform us of the time that lies right before us. Coming back to the dates that were marked by the Revelation 12 sign in 2017, and how these would translate to the appointed times in 2018. We have the birth of the man-child in 2017, pointing to the 24-hour period from sunset on September 9th to sunset on September 10th, during which the first sliver of the new moon will be visible to mark the start of the new year for Israel in 2018, or the Jewish year of 5779. This is a very important date that is pointed at if this is indeed a warning that was given to us through the Revelation 12 sign. Once again, I must state that I am no prophet, and I am only watching for events that have a high probability to fulfill Scripture and the fact that our Heavenly Father often uses patterns to convey information to us. This date could also be completely uneventful, and then we continue to search for an improved understanding, as our hindsight improves as time passes and we continue to watch for new opportunities. On the other hand, this Feast of Trumpets could be very significant, given that it will mark the end of the 120th Jubilee, and at the same time the start of a period of time during which an end to the Gentile nations will be made and God's judgment will be poured out over the earth. If there is even the slightest possibility that this could be the case, we want to be ready and watching for it when it happens. So if the Revelation 12 sign was a one-year warning that signaled the birth of the man-child which will coincide with the Feast of Trumpets in 2018, there is a very good possibility that this could point to the date on which the Church will depart from the earth. However, we would also expect some other events to happen leading up to this day. Most importantly, we know that Paul describes this day to us in 1 Thessalonians 5, where the following is written. But of the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. 
But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. From this passage there is one aspect that stands out which we need to pay careful attention to. Paul tells us that when they say peace and safety, that sudden destruction will come over them, and that they will not escape, implying that we, who are not in darkness, and who are looking for the return of our bridegroom, will escape. In addition, these events are also associated with a woman who is giving birth, linking these events to the Revelation 12 sign that is describing a birthing process. We know, given what has happened over the past year, that the peace and safety aspect that is mentioned in this passage has to do with the Middle East peace plan, which is also known as the deal of the century, which President Trump will soon reveal to the world. We have to realize and recognize that from a biblical perspective, this is all part of the Jubilee cycle that we find ourselves in this year. Trump would not have been in a position to carry out any of the bold moves involving Israel and Jerusalem if this was not part of our Heavenly Father's schedule. And looking back, we see that a 50-year pattern once again repeats that involves significant events associated with Israel. On December 6, 2017, Trump recognized Jerusalem as being the capital of Israel, and on May 14, 2018, on the 70th anniversary of Israel being a nation again, Trump relocated the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. Currently, we know that Trump and his son-in-law Jared Kushner have been working on the Middle East Peace Plan, which is also known as the Deal of the Century. This peace deal, in my opinion, is clearly associated with what Paul is referring to in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, given that this deal will most likely interfere with God's promise to Israel and where people in positions of authority will attempt to break the everlasting covenant that God made with Abraham. From what we read in Joel 3 and in Daniel 12, the contents of this plan will see the land that God promised to Israel divided or parted and given to those to whom it does not belong and this is where our Heavenly Father will put his foot down and intervene. I find this all very exciting as we see this coming together before us. Here are some of the passages that discuss God's promise to Abraham which is called the everlasting covenant. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee and their generations for an everlasting covenant, to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. I will also gather all nations, and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations, and parted my land. Isaiah 24, that describes the breaking of the everlasting covenant, goes on to say that there will be treacherous dealers that will deal treacherously, And this is once again directly linked to God's promise to Israel which those who are formulating this plan will attempt to break in order to bring about a worldly peace which translates to a covenant with death according to God's word. This will result in God's wrath being poured out over the world. From the uttermost part of the earth have we heard songs, even glory to the righteous. But I said, My leanness, my leanness, woe unto me! The treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously. Yea, the treacherous dealers have dealt very treacherously. Fear and the pit and the snare are upon thee, O inhabitant of the earth. Because ye have said, We have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. And your covenant with death shall be disannulled, and your agreement with hell shall not stand. 
When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then ye shall be trodden down by it. The treacherous dealer which is mentioned in Isaiah 24 is also mentioned in Isaiah 21, where the dealer's actions are associated with the birth pangs of a woman and Iran attacking or besieging Israel as a result. A grievous vision is declared unto me. The treacherous dealer dealeth treacherously, and the spoiler spoileth. Go up, O Elam, besiege, O Media, all the signs thereof have I made to cease. Therefore are my loins filled with pain. Pangs have taken hold upon me as the pangs of a woman that travaileth. I was bowed down at the hearing of it. I was dismayed at the seeing of it. At the time of the making of this video, the only information that the U.S. administration has provided regarding the timing of the peace deal's announcement is that it would be announced when the time is right. Now, according to God's word, we know exactly when the time would be right for this deal to be announced. If our understanding of the Revelation 12 sign is correct, that it signaled a one-year warning to the world and pointed to the Feast of Trumpets in 2018, we also have to consider the following aspects that are really important. We would seem to find ourselves in a jubilee year, given that we can see 50-year cycles involving major events for Israel repeating when we look back into history. The jubilee year ends on the day that the first sliver of the new moon is spotted in Israel, and that points to the time frame of 9 to 10 September 2018. This is the 120th jubilee year when we follow biblical chronology, and the Revelation 12 sign would then also seem to point to the end of 6,000 years in the form of a 120 jubilees that will be accomplished on the date pointed to by the Revelation 12 sign. What is still missing from this picture? In my opinion, and I could be wrong, the main focus of this jubilee cycle and the only aspect that is still missing from the events that have transpired before us is to get Israel to agree to break the everlasting covenant by those in positions of authority who serve the God of this world. The announcement of the peace plan may occur before the 9th or 10th of September, but it is Israel's agreement, in my opinion, with this proposal that will result in God's intervention. And Israel's agreement or acceptance of this proposal may very well happen on the day that is earmarked by the Revelation 12 sign, the Feast of Trumpets in 2018. Now it is possible that we may be missing a month from this interpretation, given that the fall equinox occurs after the Feast of Trumpets, in which case we may need to extend the dates of the fall feasts into October, although this would then not match the date pointed out by the Revelation 12 sign. It could also be possible that we would need to add an entire year to this time frame and that the Revelation 12 sign provided a two-year warning to those that watch. But from what I can see from the Jubilee patterns over the past century and events that involved Israel over the past year, 2018 is the year in which these prophecies will be fulfilled and the year in which we will meet our Redeemer in the air. The Revelation 12 sign therefore may have marked the start of the year in which all the events that we read about in the Word of God that are associated with a woman in travail will occur. This is a jubilee year and before the next year starts the child may very well be birthed and caught up to the throne of God. Jesus also said that in the last days it will be as it was in the days of Noah. And as it was in the days of Noe, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. Noah and his family were sealed in the ark seven days before the flood came over the earth. I believe our Heavenly Father will also provide us with a clear warning seven days before He removes us from the earth. What this warning will be, I am not certain of, and time will tell. But there is one possibility that strongly surfaces in my mind when I think about this. 
I strongly believe that the word clearly points us to a collision between Jupiter and what is known as the Red Dragon or Nibiru to fulfill the sealed up vision and prophecy as explained by Gabriel to Daniel. You can find out more about this by watching the very first two videos in this channel that are also linked in the description below. This celestial collision will be the sign given to the world of the coming of the Son of Man and because of this sign the nations will mourn knowing that the earth will encounter the debris that will result from this collision which is described as part of the trumpet and bold judgments in the book of Revelation and the stone which is cut without hands that smashes the statue into pieces that Nebuchadnezzar saw in his dream. I pray that the Lord will provide this signal to the world before the start of the tribulation as I believe this will not only open many people's eyes to the truth but will also allow the latter rain to fall on the harvest which stands white in the field ready to be harvested. The reason I have such confidence that this will be the ultimate heavenly sign given to the world is the fact that our Heavenly Father marked out the heel of the seed of the woman as explained in Genesis 3 verse 15 with the impacts of the 21 fragments of Comet Shoemaker Levy 9 and that this bruising and breaking apart of Jupiter is also clearly described in the Bible codes where Jupiter is concerned and Jupiter is found only once in equidistant letter sequence format in the Word of God. I have also provided a link to this video in the description below. Keep looking up and watch as we have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus and will soon be in His wonderful presence for eternity. Until next time or until we meet in the air, God bless.